If you're viewing a website, you can find out a lot of information by looking at the code. Um, and I'm going to actually show you, I'm in Chrome at my university website, and I'm going to, um, on my Mac, control click, or on a PC, this would be a right click. And I'm going to choose um, Inspect Element, which is this last option here. Now, Inspect Element will bring up um, this element, this tab that has elements in it. And as I look in the code, in fact, as I just hover over parts of the code, I can see that different parts of the page um, are being specified. And I can learn a lot about those parts of the page. We'll learn how to look at this and how to read the CSS styles that are being applied um, in later chapters of the book. But right now, I can actually tell just by hovering over this, um, this logo that this logo happened someplace in this part of the code, which was highlighted. And I can actually see when I just click right on that little line of code, um, if I don't move my mouse, I can see that uh, it takes up a total area of 375 pixels by 100 pixels. Now I'm looking at what's being highlighted on the screen, and that's um, a bit larger than the actual logo itself, the logo size itself. What I can also see over here in the code is that there's a background image that's being applied and it's called logo.ping and if I hover over that I can actually see the size of the of the logo which is 500 by 100 pixels and if I click on that I can see a, a larger a kind of an actual version of the, of the file logo.ping and I can see how this is being placed on the page so in this case the logo itself is much less than 500 pixels there's a lot of negative space here um, and that's being used probably just as uh, kind of buffer space on the page. So that's one way to, to check out um, the size of different elements and, and to find out some element properties. Another thing you could do is take a screenshot. So on my Mac, I'll choose Command Shift 4, the number 4, and then I get a kind of a crosshair icon that I can use to click and drag just over the logo itself. Now on your PC, you'll use uh, the print screen function. And with uh, once I've taken that screenshot, I could then open it in Photoshop. And in Photoshop, I could choose image and then image size, and I could take a look in here at my dimensions. So 299 by 82 is a little closer to the actual size that the logo um, is on the page. It's maybe a little tiny bit smaller than that, but that's, that's a pretty good number right there, 300 by 80, let's say. Um, as a possible size for a logo. That doesn't mean that every logo on every website is going to be that size, but it gives you a little bit of an idea of how people are thinking about their materials and their media as they're developing their web pages.